Yoshi's Island is so damn good, dude. Where to even begin with this game? It is damn near perfection. This game took Yoshi, who was a mere side character at the time, a tool in Super Mario World more or less, and expanded that character and their world to such an incredible degree. Rather than going for a traditional art style, the game goes for a living coloring book aesthetic, with outlines so bold and so sharp, oh, it's beautiful. Fantastic level variety featuring many different landscapes and challenges from start to finish. An absolutely legendary soundtrack with memorable tunes from top to bottom. A pretty original concept as well that fits right into the Mario universe, making Baby Mario a worthwhile character after all. Despite the whole crying thing, he did learn how to play golf too, you know what, good for him. The egg mechanic was super neat as well, allowing you to aim, shoot, and ricochet off walls to your heart's content. As long as you're properly stocked up, of course. Yoshi can also transform into vehicles now too! Why not? There are no rules anymore! The boss fights too, so good, taking regular enemies, both new and old, and simply make them big. It's so simple, but so brilliantly executed. And the final battle with Baby Bowser, wow. Easily one of the best fights in Nintendo's history, with an amazing song to go with it. This- the song is so damn good! And the adventure culminates in a beautiful musical piece for the credits. God, this game is amazing. Even the Game Boy Advance version is solid. It's not as good, of course, but still totally a worthwhile shot at that game. I could go on for quite a while about this, but Yoshi's Island is simply a fantastic game. It's a hard game, like really, really hard at times, but other than that, it is fantastic through and through. But the thing is, I think a lot of you guys already know that. If you haven't played this game by now, you should definitely get on that, but most of us can appreciate the goodness of this game. But the thing is, Nintendo knew it as well, so over the years, they've tried to recapture the magic and the glory with a sequel. Two, two of them. Neither of which on the home console, strictly on the DS and 3DS, and uh, nobody talks about these, despite how well loved the first game is. I wonder if there's a reason that is. Yoshi's Island DS was released in 2006, 11 years after the original. It kinda came out of nowhere too, this was announced via a logo reveal back at that E3. Boy, what hype! The game starts up with a brief recap of the story from that first game. And cool, you know what, now I am in the mood for more Yoshi goodness, lay it on me. Kamek and his cronies are at it once again, except instead of just kidnapping the baby Mario Bros, they are stealing any baby they can get their hands on. Oh boy, you keeping one of them a secret? I can't imagine which one that could be- Oh, the box art just shows all of them. Alright. And as expected, both Mario and Peach get dropped from the sky back onto Yoshi's Island. So now it is up to them to once again save baby Luigi, save the other babies as well, and save the day along the way. The box art shows off the main mechanic this time around. On top of baby Mario making a return, now there are up to five different babies to play with, unlocking them throughout the adventure. They all sport their own unique abilities too, like carrying Baby Mario lets you run fast, as well as being able to hit these special M blocks. Baby Peach can flutter further and higher, more so if there's a gust of wind under you. Baby Donkey Kong can climb up vines and charge, sort of like a Wario Land-esque dash, which is interesting because Baby Wario is here too. Instead of doing a dash though, he holds a magnet that can pull coins towards you, as well as pulling magnetic blocks and platforms. And lastly, even Baby Bowser joins you along the way, allowing you to spit fire at the expense of swallowing enemies and making eggs. They all also have different properties to how eggs react when hitting walls, which is neat and all, but this whole concept has one very critical flaw. Do you remember how in Donkey Kong 64, you had multiple Kongs and you can only swap between them at these specific points? Well, that applies here too. You can only change which baby you're holding at these stations. And yes, 
and it's very annoying. It's not the worst thing in the world, it is definitely easier to swallow in a 2D platformer rather than a 3D collectathon, but there were many times that I simply could not get something because I didn't have the right baby on me at the time. Sometimes this idea does lead to a neat combination of powers here and there, but come on, why can't Yoshi just hold all five babies at once? I'm already exploring an entire island as a dinosaur with the ability to make egg ammunition by swallowing my foes, but sorry, this, this is where the realism line is drawn? Okay. The game also constantly reminds you that it's on the DS. The action is spread across both screens at all times. I'm iffy on this whole idea of both screens being used for gameplay on the DS. I get it, I mean the DS was really the only console that could let you do something like that. You got games like Sonic Rush, uh, Contra 4, the other weird Yoshi game, Touch and Go, they all did that, they split the gameplay across both screens. But in my opinion, Yoshi's Island DS is the worst game of its kind to do it. You can swap it between which screen you're primarily playing on at any time, and since the devs knew that, they weren't afraid of leaving the chance available to hide stuff right in the middle where you can't see it. This screen gap does make a lot more sense when played on an actual console, rather than just looking at scrunched up footage, but it's still less than desirable. Honestly, the game as a whole has this weird lack of polish. At its core, it is certainly more Yoshi's Island. You platform through levels that have an emphasis on exploration, you collect a bunch of red coins and flowers, you get graded at the end of each stage, you get hit and then you hear crying. It's more Yoshi's Island, all right, for better or for worse. Ooh, and that's right, with five babies, now there are five unique baby crying sounds too. Hell yeah, dude. But I don't know, the game just sorta of feels off at times. There are a handful of brand new enemies, and something about them just doesn't look right. They don't look like they fit in with the returning enemies that are essentially just reused sprites. And okay, what, what the hell is this? This is supposed to be a kangaroo, apparently. This is, this is like the weirdest looking thing I've ever seen in my life. This is like the second worst kangaroo in existence, I think. The same can be said for the bosses too, man they just, they look out of place. You can't mix the old style with the new style and pretend it's the same thing, it doesn't work that way. The music is a bit rough too. It's not terrible, you know it tries to be all happy and peppy like the original, even doing the light motif thing of remixing the main theme throughout the entire soundtrack, but the songs just miss their mark in my opinion. But comparatively, Oh, we'll get there. Here's the shy guy chanting in the original Yoshi's Island. And here we have it on DS. That doesn't sound like anything. What happened? A rocket ship, what? Oh, wow, okay, here we go. This game also, by far, has one of the worst levels I have ever experienced in a platformer. The cave that never ends. L look at this. Look at how disgustingly slow this is. I, I feel offended. A few minutes in, there is this part here where the jump just for some reason gets a little finicky if you're running down this hill. Oh, what's that? You died? You gotta deal with this molasses speed again. It's terrible. Really now, I feel that many of the levels here outstay their welcome. There are only five worlds this time around, instead of six previously, but the levels are longer to compensate, which by the end of the game, I was really just praying for the credits. It's not that I hate the game or anything like that, but it's just a slog by the end of it. Oh, suddenly Bowser shows up. Okay, hey, what's up? What's up, man? Looking terrible. My, my god, dude, what, what is this outline? Apparently now, Bowser and Kamek traveled from the future on a quest to steal seven star children, which I guess can grant the power to rule the universe. And believe me, his appearance here is about as jarring as I've explained it. He's here now, I guess he's my target, let's go. Eventually, Yoshi and crew make their way to Bowser's 
castle, I guess? You see, baby Bowser ended up having a falling out with his future self, so that's why he's on our side. Well, until you get to the end at least, and then he wants to fight. Typical whiny child, never knowing what they actually want. I, I think that's what they're going for. I, I don't know. His fight is pretty identical to the one from the first game, so naturally he goes down pretty quickly. Oh man, the big boy is here! You hit him with some eggs, and then he gets big, because of course he does, and then all the Yoshis team up to throw even more eggs at him, and that's it. His plan has been thwarted, and then... <gasps> babies! So it turns out that all of the heroes were actually the star children in question, including the newly born baby Yoshi. Jaw, oh, how precious. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I'm assuming the way baby Wario looks and the way that a regular baby looks, you could probably assume one of them is a little more special than the other. You didn't need to kidnap all the regular babies, but hey, what do I know? I wasn't there. So yeah, that's Yoshi's Island DS. It's just... It's just okay. There are some additional mini-games in there as well, but like the main game, they're just okay. Nothing about this really stands out aside from the baby mechanic, which I said before, isn't as well thought out as it should be. It was pretty neat at the time having a proper sequel to Yoshi's Island that wasn't Yoshi's story, but nowadays it just sort of feels like a fan-made sequel to the original. Eh well. As I mentioned before, no one really talks about this game and now I can see why, but that didn't stop Nintendo from trying again because eight years later, for the 3DS, we got another sequel. Yoshi's New Island. Oh boy, there goes that word new again. Nintendo just couldn't handle themselves. So, the story of this one. Hmm. So, the original Yoshi's Island is canon now, okay? So, accept that. At the end of that one, the stork delivers baby Mario and Luigi to their parents. Psych! He delivered them to the wrong couple! Yeah, oops. Kamek sees his chance, snatches up Luigi once again, Mario falls to the surface below, once again. I don't know if babies can experience deja vu, but you may as well start them off while they're young. However, to be fair, Mario doesn't fall where he was before. He falls onto a new island. Oh, that that's why it's called that. So I, I guess Yoshi's Island DS is not canon, after all? We, we've never seen Baby Wario since. Who, who knows what mischief he's getting into? <laughs> Yoshi's New Island plays exactly the same as the two games prior, just with the idea of multiple babies being gone, and instead we have the return of a single baby, and I will say that that is for the best. This game plays it safe throughout the entire thing, opting more to give off a feeling of, oh yeah, I remember that thing, rather than, oh, that new thing that I don't like, what is, that's, that's not a kangaroo. But peppered in here and there is a little bit of newness. Like the transformations do return, this time in the form of motion controlled challenges. They are okay. They're definitely not as enjoyable as they used to be, but credit for being different. The Superstar shows up once again too. You see, this was used in previous games to transform Baby Mario and he would become super powered. And it was awesome! Look at him go! A hero since he was a baby he was. It shows up here too, but instead, Yoshi gets the power up instead, controlling almost exactly the same. I don't know why you stole the spotlight from Baby Mario. Except these segments always end with a super fast flying section that just... stops. It's a, that's a sharp drop, honestly. Since the developers opted to stay safe conceptually, that means that more effort was put into polishing the core adventure. The game is actually pretty fun. It's difficult too, going for perfect scores and levels is tough. That is how it was in the DS game too, but here's the thing. The adventure here goes back to six worlds of shorter levels like the original had, making it a much friendlier romp to replay if you did want to get perfect scores. They somehow messed up the control too. If you're standing still, there's like an extra half second of buffer time before you're ready to shoot an egg. 
but not if you're moving just a split second beforehand. It is easy to work around, but this shouldn't be a thing in the first place. The original game flows so well, and it is amazing how much an extra half second of animation can nearly completely ruin that. The bosses take a major hit too. Half of the bosses are just Kamek, and the other half are just really easy. Meh. The only real new gimmick that's here comes in the form of egg dozers. One swallow of a giant enemy, Yoshi absolutely destroys his butt. Oh no. And then he has access to one giant egg to shoot around and cause destruction. Occasionally, you'll stumble onto some metal egg dozers too, used to roll across the floor and allow you to sink to the bottom of water sections. Not really sure how that works because you're not physically connected to the egg, so I don't know how you're still sinking. I'm asking too many questions. It's a neat idea and all, but like the Mega Mushroom of a similarly named new franchise, it's purely contextual. This didn't need to be here and nothing of value would really be lost. Except for this image of a huge Yoshi about to poo out a giant egg that will live on in infamy. But the strongest talking point for the game comes in its presentation. Rather than going for a pixel aesthetic that you're used to, Instead, New Island goes for a, um... Man, I don't- I don't even know how to explain it. It's- it's a- it's a weird look. It's like a mix of watercolor for the backgrounds, but also 3D models of the main characters. But they also have like this weird watercolor texture on top of them, but they don't- Nothing really meshes here. It does look better on the console you're playing it on, which is something that can be said for nearly all 3DS games. And while I do appreciate seeing a bunch of familiar enemies in 3D for the first time, bleh. And then there's the soundtrack. Huh. I do want to say that I think there is a big misconception here regarding the soundtrack. As a whole, it really isn't that bad. Some of the music... Yeah. Some of the music is really bad. I've accepted that. There are good pieces of music here though, and they're actually pretty good. But whoever decided to use kazoos, man, they really should be fired. The end of the game is awfully familiar too. You make your way to Bowser Jr., you beat him, he turns big, and you beat him again. And you may have noticed that I didn't talk about the final boss music of Yoshi's Island DS. And it's for the same reason I'm not going to say much about the final boss music in New Island. They didn't even come close to attempting to replicate the awesome rock feeling of the original. It's actually kind of embarrassing, and as a result I really just got nothing else to say on it. To be fair, it would be hard to top that original piece. Boy, that was good. And just like that, baby Luigi is saved once again. What? Suddenly warping through space and time? What the f- Um, okay. Bowser's here again. What the- So, his fight is basically the same as the baby counterpart? Uh... Warping through space and time, that's the best. that's the best you could come up with? What the hell? So baby Luigi is then saved, for real this time. The babies are brought to their actual parents now, hopefully, and then the credits roll. My god, that is one of the wildest endings in Nintendo's history. Oh, and this is kind of neat. Throughout the adventure, a mysterious pipe figure offers to help you out if you're having a tough time. It turns out that that is actually Mario from the future. What's with all this time travel going on all of a sudden? I guess Mario traveled back to make sure he continues to exist in his time? We're getting into some Back to the Future stuff up in here. Great Scott. So yeah, to answer the question that was posed at the start of the video, there are specific reasons why these games aren't remembered all that fondly, if at all. People just know they exist, and that's not good. I will say though that the original is still the king, Yoshi's Island, man, this game is so damn good. I don't take back anything that I said, it just would have been nice if the sequels that have a similar name were that good as well. And that's just not the timeline that we're on. And I know what you're saying now, what about Yoshi's Woolly World? 
Give it time. I'll get to it. Yoshi as an overall franchise is actually a really weird one. When it comes to the green dinosaur, I have plenty of material to talk about down the line. But until then, could I get a picture of the really huge Yoshi again? Thank you. Nintendo, what the hell were you thinking?